humble and kind Ugandan who we've had an honor to care for at the Three Rivers Cancer Center. Uh, with a diagnosis of multiple myeloma, stage 3A, this is the cancer of cells responsible for producing antibodies, uh, basically for defense of the body, and it's an incurable cancer. So the medication we usually give is to prolong life or to manage the cancer so that it doesn't it doesn't spread very fast. So he says on the 21st September 2021, Mama Igolat Akaboy presented to our facility as a referral from Komi Orthopedic Center, where she had presented with pathological fracture of the left femur following long-standing history of bone pains. The evaluation done at Komi Hospital confirmed the diagnosis of multiple myeloma and hence her referral to Three Rivers Cancer Center for further management. Mama Igolat was commenced on chemotherapy and did so well and she was able to stand up and walk. Again, with crunches despite the fracture, she, she regained her weight as well. Seven to eight months later, the disease relapsed and she was commenced on another kind of regimen, that's chemotherapy, and she amazingly did well and commenced on maintenance therapy up to until the second relapse, which was in August 2023. That's two years after her diagnosis. Eh? She then commenced on another chemotherapy and seemed to do well throughout the early February 2024 when she developed a cough with challenges of breathing. Evaluation revealed that the multiple myeloma cancer had now spread to involve her lung. This was now the actual real. She developed respiratory failure. After, after all, we could have done on the 28th of February 2024 at exactly 7.15, Mama Igolat Morel Akabai passed on and went to be with the Lord. May the Lord comfort Mzee Besweli, Stephen Akabai and the family at a time as this and give you the resurrection faith as we intently look forward to the resurrection of the coming of our Lord. We thank the family of Mosei Beswell, Stephen Akabwai, medical teams at, at Kumi Orthopedic Center, Kosu, Three Rivers Cancer Center. May her soul rest in peace for God and my country. Dr. Omodin Abraham, consultant oncologist, CEO, Three Rivers Cancer Center. Yeah, thank you so much, fellow mourners. Uh, Mama, we call her Toto, but today I'm calling her Mama, was a very kind and lovely lady. Every time she came in with the family, she lit up the place. We are going to miss her so much because now she had become a family. And Andrew and Florence, I'm not forgiving you for those two hourly consultations. <laughs> you still owe us, but thank you so much for giving us the honor to take care of Mama. We do not take it for granted. It's such a difficult time for us right now at Three Rivers. Usually people pray for the family, but they never pray for the medical workers. Please pray for us in this trying time. May total soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much, Three Rivers Cancer Center. It is very rare to find medics who follow their patients and even come and share a very hard and trying time like this. Thank you very much for honoring the family and for coming to give such clarity so that people don't create their own stories. I beg to recognize the presence of everyone, but in a special way, allow me to acknowledge the presence of Honorable on Maputo, welcome on it, on Maputo, where are you? Thank you very much for coming. Honorable Alice Alasso, Honorable Alice Alasso, where are you? Thank you very much for coming. You know, as I grow young, the eyes don't work very well. So if I've not spotted you, forgive me. Flight Captain, Honorable Mike Mukola, Vice Chair, MRM Eastern Uganda. 
we want to welcome you to say a few words. Welcome, sir. Church, the family of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Akagwai, the late Mama, who has left us, the chairman of the Electoral Commission, and all the commissioners, the members of parliament, both present and emeritus, fellow owners. I stand with you and in front of you with a heavy heart because Mama was the epitome of humility, a matriarch and a lady of dignity. Mr. Kabwai, the first chairman of then what he called the Interim Electoral Commission, a man who, as you all know, served this country with a dignity and integrity. I do recall clearly the time we held elections and I was one of those who was under his provision in 1996 for the sixth parliament. But also the fact that uh, we were able to manage the first directly direct presidential elections ever held in this country, ever since Adam and Eve left Eden. I do recall very clearly that one time when we were going through the, the challenges then of managing the elections, in Colorado, we had a multitude of people and my Lord Justice, the President was then coming in from Nakasero. And we had a flood and a multitude of people along the way. The Interim Electoral Commission had a deadline of 5 p.m. for the presidential elections or the presidential candidates to file their papers. And that was statutory. When he got slightly above Upper Kololo Terrace, there was no movement of these vehicles. The whole convoy was locked. We decided to pull him out of his presidential convoy, the vehicle. And if you have seen the pictures, then the picture which have been circulating, we put him on a border border. And we were able to really move him on the border border at that time and managed to get him to register his presidential and the nomination to be nominated 15 minutes before the five o'clock deadline. And I want to say that uh, Mr. Kabwai was, by the time we got there, looking at his watch to show you that. This man, Akabwai, was rolling by the book. And I'm very sure that if we had passed a minute, history would have changed. But I must salute Mr. Akabwai because he held the first direct presidential, parliamentary, and local government elections very well. We salute him. Secondly, I also want to say that uh, Mr. Kabwai then headed the Uganda Revenue Authority. 
as Director General of Uganda Revenue Authority, it was then a very difficult time when integrity was the call of the day. But I want to tell you, fellow mourners and those of you who are here, Mr. Akabwai left the, uh, the Uganda Revenue Authority with dignity and retired at home with a man who did not have anything and any question on his integrity. They say besides every great man, there's a great woman. That's the lady we have here. I want to convey the message from the chairman of the National Resistance Movement, who is also the President of the Republic of Uganda, is in touch with the family. I just talked to State House, His Excellency the President, who recalls very clearly Mr. Kabwai's times with him in Entari, in Mbarara. And they have remained close. I want to say that a full message will be conveyed to the family at the burial grounds. And I want to say that His Excellency the President shares this grief with you as a family and the message will be fully conveyed to you. To the mourners, as I conclude, I want to really thank you and the church for having come in and joined these prayers. It is important that we record a very important thing in life. God gives and God takes away. The message that we want to capture in this is that we are sending off a lady who has accompanied a man who has served this country, as I said earlier, with the dignity and decorum. I appeal to the whole country and those of you who are here to emulate the character, the image, and the integrity of Akabai that has been displayed by your presence and the family that is here today. The family once again, may the God, the Lord Almighty, the God of Abraham, strengthen you at this very difficult time. The church, thank you, and thank you once again. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Amen. Thank you very much, Flight Captain. The last time I was with Mzee Bese Rakada, we happened to have gone to the same school, Gwara High School. And I was looked to officiate in the election of the Old Students Association, the incoming executive. I was with the Apollo Jerashon Report. But we rode on the Apollo Bessel Akabai. And you know, <laughs> before he came, he had to get permission from Mama. And we asked him why he had delayed. And, he had, and then he explained. And I think you have heard a Musugunu. You have heard the English here. Now these people spoke. To talk about the Bakaba, spoke with the Queen's English. Now you was mixed with Uganda. That was not very really easy to do. We will recognize other people a little later and maybe we will say one or two things, but in the interest of time, allow me to ask our host and the leader to lead us into the next item, Reverend Philip, please. Uh, thank you very much, Reverend Osiri, and for all the speeches we've had. 
Uh, this is just to all of us that we, when children of God gather, uh, the enemy is always there. I really urge you that please hold your valuables, be responsible for them. The person next to you might be the one. Because of experience on um, Sunday, uh, as we stood up for to praise the Lord, somebody uh, was busy in the, the person who she was staying next to me and uh, marched out to the phone, to the half phone. So please, all your valuables, be responsible for them. Uh, 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 the person sitting next to you, you don't know him, you don't know her. Praise God. And uh, after hearing all the, uh, those words, uh, it is a, a time for us to thank God uh, for giving her to us for the period we had, the 70 years. So we have to thank God for what she was to us, uh, to the family, and to all of us, friends of the family. And uh, as we are going to do this, uh, we, I want to take this opportunity to welcome our preacher tonight, who also happened to have worked, he has affili uh, is affiliated uh, to the Akabai family. Uh, none other than Reverend Canon Grace Kaiso, former chairman for Secretary for Uganda Joint Christian Council, UJCC. He's our preacher tonight. And uh, among the staff who are serving, you've already had uh, 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 our Reverend. Uh, we have uh, Canon uh, Christine Shimania, who is with us. And uh, this is the team which are, are, are leading uh, the service. So let's rise up on our feet and then we offer our thank offering to God for the life of the late uh, uh, mama whom we are celebrating her life tonight. And we shall sing him. Choir. Okay, let's start with the abide with me. Then we'll come to come uh, thou uh, fount of every blessing. So let's start with abide with me. It is in page uh, 10. And then we shall come to the uh, come thou fount of every blessing. Abide with me.
of our thanksgiving and appreciation for the many things that you have done and blessed us with, including Toto Mirela Kagwai. We pray that you accept and bless these gifts for the expansion of your kingdom and especially helping the family and you continue to meet each one of us at our very points of need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, our Creator and Sustainer, you promised to be with us in all the circumstances of our lives. In times of celebration, you're with us. Even in times of great sorrow, and pain, and emptiness, Lord, you promised to be with us. So we need you, Lord, to be in our midst, to speak words that encourage us. Teach us, remind us the truths about life and the calling that you're placing before us in this place. We ask this in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our friends, fellow mourners, 
your excellencies i i just can't go over all the protocol as it should be but allow me to just say fellow mourners we want to welcome you very warmly to st andrew's church to be part of a very significant service the service of farewell to one of us as a disciple of christ to one of us as one who has been part of our journey in life a mother many things to each one of us thank you so much for honoring her and accepting the part of this service death can can mean many things to us when we we lose a child for instance we normally say well we have lost we, their dreams unrealized for the parents in the death of a child when we lose a young person we normally feel like their time their dreams have been cut short they have not realized their aspirations in life when we lose Toto, a person in the age of Toto, a person who has lived their lives and perhaps suffered severely when many parts of their body are letting them down, there is a sense in which we can say, they have rested. They are rested. Those of you who have been very close to Toto would know. The doctor just gave us a testimony here. Three or four years of pain and suffering. With a sense that there is no healing, but perpetuating life, but in pain. So, I pray that we accept that Papa has rested, has lived her life to the full, has won her race to the end. We gather here because there has been a living testimony. We've had the testimonies from the parents, the saw the children telling us what kind of person she was. They use these words. An extravagant and loving person. A person who embraced people across difference. Not many people live those kinds of love. Sometimes our love is, is targeted it's for certain groups, certain tribes maybe. Look into the photos, we could see Toto embracing even the white people. So a person like that is a great loss. They use the other word, it was like the blanket of comfort. A very interesting image. Mothers do that. They hover over their children and provide protection. So you have that sense of loss, of security, of protection. She was a fountain of wisdom. You see, you judge the wisdom in any family by how people live their lives. Honorable Mukura has been testifying to us the experience of working with Papa Akabai in a very demanding and testing office. And he was witnessing the fact that he was so ethical okay, to the point that everybody knew that. And they knew that if the president was the the Akabai type would, would be the one who would say, sorry sir, you're late. Now, people of that kind belong to families where the 
realize depths of wisdom. People who have understood life and its meaning and live by values, enduring values. So, such is Toto. His fountain of wisdom would organize your loss as children because as we live in these trying times, you need people you can go to as to where to drink wisdom, to get wisdom, to get guidance, to get support in the trials of life. The other word they used was resilience. The capacity to be able to manage, not to go under in times of difficult or challenges. The capacity, it is, it is, it describes a people who are built within their capacities that help them to cope in various seasons of life. Some people have capacities that can only cope in times when things are going well. And when things change, there is great loss, for things are falling apart around them, they just can't cope. Because in their upbringing, they have not been helped to develop the resilience to be able to cope with the different seasons in life. She was a canon in the Church of Uganda. Now, canons are usually chosen because they, they have lived an exemplary life, but also the expectations that they will continue to provide guidance which is to show this is right, this is not right. You know, those are the people, the canons. That's how people are chosen to be canons. And she was a canon. And the lady canon. You know, our churches sometimes are not very good at organizing and giving space uh, to the service of women. But in, in, as early as that, that she could be lifted up to become a, a canon, a lady canon in the Anglican Church of Uganda, that is really great significance, great recognition. Let us clap. So we're here to say farewell to that kind of person. The person who has lived their life to the full, served the community, invested in their families, and lived a life that was exemplary. Those of who have we, we console with you as the children, we know the pain, we know what this all means for you. Those of us who have lost mothers will understand that you know there's a sense of emptiness, you know, that almost the father can never feel, even if he's still alive. So we know that there will be those moments, but the Lord is with you. And find comfort in each other. When you lose a mother, you need to find a rallying point among yourselves. The temptation will be the scattered. Because the one who was drawing you closer is gone. And I hear people say, after my mother died, I hope and pray that part of the dignity that have accorded your mother in, in service like this will continue to be reflected in your desire to work together, to live together, and to support each other for the rest of the journey of your lives. This day reminds us that we are on a journey. And journeys have a need. Every day we leave home, we start on a journey. But that journey must end somewhere. I always uh, get surprised when you go to the tax park. If you've been in Kampala, the tax park around 6 o'clock. There are so many people, and you're wondering, hey, where are all these going to go? Go around midnight, the whole park is empty. Because people started their journey in the morning, the judgment took them everywhere. 
but there is they must at the end of it look go back to what they call what home and so people find everybody is moving you ask him where are you going home 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 everybody the journey ends in a home somewhere i don't want to go into what our homes are that would be a talk of another you know people go home and they have to go home whatever the situation whatever the circumstances in their home they, they still do up they still go home and i want to say that in life on the journey of life there is also we are on a journey of going home there is a homecoming there will be an a welcome at the end of our journeys and i want to read very quickly that homecoming uh, we read it in matthew chapter 25 it says when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him then he will sit on his glorious throne before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a sheep as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will place the sheep on his right and the goats on the left then the king will say to those on the right come you who are blessed by my father he headed the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for i was hungry and you gave me food i was thirsty and you gave me drink i was a stranger and you welcomed me i was naked and you clothed me i was sick and you visited me i was in prison and you came to me then the righteous will say ask or answer him saying lord when do we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink and when do we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you and when do we see you sick or in prison and visit you and the king will answer them truly i say to you as you did it to one of the list of these my brothers you did it to me then he will say to those on the left Depart from me, you cast into eternal fire, prepared for the evil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not close me. Sick in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison? and they did not minister to you then and did not minister to you then he will answer them saying truly i say to you as you did not do, as you did not do it to one of the least of these you did not do it to me and these will go away into eternal punishment but the writers will inherit eternal life it is a kind of homecoming the end of our journeys that there will be a time when we encounter our creator when our journeys end in life and you say that there are about two there are two stages there is this stage where Toto has departed from us the physical departure from us uh, and in many ways what we have been talking about the testimonies around her life uh, our judgment of what she has been in our eyes so in, in many ways we in, in the first part of her departure from us we are able to give some testimony and say this lady was good in our assessment it's good hmm? but there will be that final home coming when we face our creator and i don't want to go to the details of of the text but i just want to help us understand that the text is about really two things one that god gives us an opportunity and god gives us the ability the two story the story is about when people didn't so the needs around them there were opportunities around them to support those who need their support to minister 
to those that need their ministry, they have given opportunity. And they had the capacity to be able to minister, to provide, to respond in love and care and compassion. They had the capacity to do that. It is not that God was expecting them not to, to do what they are not able to do. When God creates the opportunity, it so provides the capacity. So the question here, God is saying, you guys, you had the opportunity. But you are, and I gave you the capacity. And you're not using those opportunities. Huh? Wherever you are, wherever God has placed you as a parent, that's an opportunity. How are you using that opportunity to nurture? How are you investing into those under your care? Your children, the relatives around you. That's the opportunity. We have opportunities in our positions that God has given us. To serve sometimes the people at a lower level, sometimes the people at a higher level, sometimes at a national level. Those are opportunities for service. How are you using those opportunities? And He has given you the capacity to be able to be effective, to be the light and the salt in that position. How are you using that opportunity? So the call of God is, is not to go with the fact that uh, at God, we, we are not, how can we help? Hmm? Even people in this, how can we help? How can I uh, help? No. See, it's open your eyes. The people that you meet every day. See God in those people. See the value of God. See the face of God in every person that you meet, whether he's, he's, he's a high-ranking person, whether he's a low-ranking person. That is God. The image of God is that person. Treat that person with dignity. Treat that person with care, with compassion, if they need it. But God gives us the opportunity not only in terms of this, the opportunity to serve him and serve his people and the capacity to do that. But also it gives us the opportunity to prepare for ourselves for our eternity. God continuously is speaking to us. All of us have had many sermons and many great preachers. Many of us spend time on tele, tele, tele preachers. You know, many of us have books and read about victory over sin, what, all kinds of resources. We've had that opportunity to hear what does Christ demand of me. That's the greatest opportunity that has given us. But when we leave this earth, we know where we are going. That we have found Christ who has overcome death. Some, someone asked me why a Christian. I, 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 I told him, but you know what? Death is the greatest enemy of us all. And we try to we never get reconciled with. He's our, our greatest companion, but we never get reconciled with death. Because we are helpless. Hmm? And who are helpless? We may have all that we can do to this state here, but we are helpless. Sincere, we are helpless. But the difference for me is that Christ has given us victory over this. He is the person who has lived this life, died and did what? Was up from that day. Praise the Lord. So that victory, you see, you don't look for help in people who can't help you. Hmm? I always tell the story that when we were growing up, eh, our main house was like here and the kitchen was like there. And in the night, somehow, our mothers used to forget. They would say, oh, we forgot the tin of salt. Now you go huh? and pick 
the key of salt from the, the kitchen. Between there is a lot of darkness. Forget these days we have, you know, solar lights and everywhere there's light. But those days, big dark. You know, there are banana plant plantations everywhere. So you are expected to go. I always ask myself, I always looked for the younger, my younger brother, the youngest, hmm? to say, come and do it. No, I mean, I said, what, what was I looking for in looking for companions from a person who can't even, you know, chase a, a frog? Really? And sometimes it's like that. We are holding on to things that won't help us. They have no capacity to lead us to victory, to hope. The Lord has given us victory that day. That's why I believe in Him. I believe in Christ for that reason. That in him I also can have victory what? Over death. So you have many opportunities that God has placed before us to make that decision for yourself. We say in the midst of life, in the midst of life is death. Hmm? That as we live our lives, death is part of our living. But we never pay attention, we never prepare ourselves for death. And how do you prepare for death? It's not suppressed. Because it will come, but when it comes, you won't find me ready. And that's what the God has given us the ability. He has the ability, you have the ability to choose the Lord Christ who has died and resurrected from the dead, or you can choose emptiness. Put your faith in things that won't help you. My father had a dog. And one of the, one of the, and he had a motorbike. So one of the ways we, were, we, were told, we, we knew that my father was coming back was when the dog would come in the, in the courtyard and began to, to turn around to back. Because somehow dogs are able to pick the motorbike thing. So when we saw that the dog comes and they get to back, then we knew that our father was what? Coming back. And you know what, we, you know, those days you make sure that everything was in place. Because our father, if you found five or six coffee beans eh, left on the ground, hey, that was war. So what are you doing? You see how you're wasting coffee. Eh? They were very strict. And so we would prepare ourselves. We might prepare ourselves to make sure that everything that was supposed to be in the right place is in the right one, in the right place. We, when my one day the when father the father came back, the the dog the dog didn't go in the courtyard. The dog, as we were taken by surprise, because now father came close, do, 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 and the dog hadn't won us at all. <laughs> so the dog took off to the banana plantation. And so we asked, hey, what is happening here? We realized that the dog had actually eaten daddy's chicken. <laughs> and so, it was afraid of facing what? Our father. He took off. Friends, that is a real story, by the way. It's a true story. Um, but I, it teaches me, it instructs me that, you know, before the end of our lives, like those of you who grew up in the village in Europe, there were things that you made sure were home hmm? before it gets back, isn't it? Hmm? You 
made sure the chicken and the goats were not in the what? You want tell them to bring them home. You make sure that everything was in its right place before it is dark. We don't know when our lives will cross. We don't know. I don't know. Recently, one of our friends was their mother. They left her there, she ate lunch, she looked, she even ordered for some special drink, soda, what? And in a few minutes, they realized she had passed. So we don't know when life will close. Maybe there are those things that need attention, that you need to attend to before the night closes, before your life comes back. What are those things that you need to address, to deal with? These are things you know for yourself. Those are the things that come to your mind when you say, if I die today, then you begin to say, hey, how about this? How about this? How about this? Sometimes it will be helpful after a, a, a service like this to go back and say, by the way, if I were to die, what are those things that I need to attend to before my what? My death. So that we, are, we don't appear like that dog. Hmm? That when that day comes, we are too afraid to face the one, the Lord, because we have not dealt with things that must be dealt with before we die. The things that are shameless, the things that we feel we we feel and know the Lord. I think the calling in a death like this is that calling to be asking yourself how am I prepared for this thing that is coming and I don't know when it is coming. Shall I be, shall I feel ashamed to face the Lord so now that I have the opportunity and I have the ability to put things right. Let me start on that journey. Let that be our critical agenda, brothers and sisters, to deal and address those things that need attention, that give us discomfort whenever we think about death, that give us discomfort whenever we think about the coming of the Lord. We thank the Lord for our sister, we want to pray that God will strengthen us and see us through as we accompany her. We pray for Papa uh, that God will support him. And thank you so much again for coming. We need to do this more often every day. We need each other. We're living in very difficult times. So we need the support of each other. It does not, it's not money that, that makes a difference. It is our presence, the, the, the being there. And, and God has given us these opportunities to reflect also, you know, we are too busy to be thinking about the important things about our lives. We are thinking about investment, we are thinking about buying this or that, we are thinking about securing the future. But the security of the future is about the choices we are making now, what you are doing with what you have now. Because those things you may never get, get them there. One time I also longed, the Lord, that I will have a farm where I will go and sit and count my cows. And, and, and you know how life does, eh? There are many priorities. Other priorities come, 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 and you never really get there. But the longing is always there, strangely. So, God help us that we use these moments to, to reflect on what is important of life. What is enough in life? What is it that we need to attend to before the end of our lives? So that we may have a warm welcoming from the Lord. Blessed are that that you believe that wonderful. That God can say, wow, you fought a good fight. Honorable. Eh? You have served this nation. And at the end of your journey, you know, it will not be the present to say, oh, child of, eh? but God himself 
believe in God. Say, come, my child, you've served well. You've sacrificed well. You've lived well. Come and inherit the kingdom of God. What a day that will be. How should we, how should we long for that day? We have the opportunity to put things right so that the end we all will be part of that gathering of men and women who have suffered but suffered well. Do not lose everything. They did lose themselves in the world but men and women who lived with purpose and sacrificing themselves for the sake of Christ. The Lord bless you. Thank you very much, Reverend Canon Grace Kaiso, for giving us that challenge, but also encouragement at such a time as this. May the Lord bless you and continue to refresh you. Before I invite Canon Christian Shimania to say the concluding prayers, let me request us to turn to page 12 of our order of service. We shall stand together, affirm what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 12. Let me invite us to stand together as we affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed together, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Greater of heaven and earth, living Jesus Christ, who is only a son of He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and one of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, he was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, and the resurrection of life everlasting. Amen. Let us sit on him as I invite the Reverend Canon Christian Shimania to do the concluding prayer.
Mire Igolata Kabwai for the love and mercy she received from you and showed amongst us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants having departed that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask you that in due time we may share with all the saints that clearer vision when we shall see your face in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Almighty Father, of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with those who mourn, that casting our care in you, they may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and the grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins, the evil we have done and the good we have not done, and strengthen us to follow the steps of your Son in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us now commend our Toto to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Let us all stand up as we commend her to the keeping of our Father in heaven. Page 14. Heavenly Father, by your mighty power, you gave us life, and in your love, you have given us new life in Christ Jesus. We trust the spirit of Totomire Igolata Kabwai in your merciful hands. In the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us, and is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in glory forever. Amen. May God, in his infinite love and mercy, bring the whole church, living and departed in the Lord Jesus, to a joyful resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God, the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon Toto, rest upon Papa, rest upon all the children and grandchildren. Rest upon all of us here in church. Rest upon Uganda now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Christine. May I call upon the MC to give us the final announcements before we recess. Good morning once again. I want to take this opportunity to once more thank you in your various capacities for condoling with us. Uh, before I make the announcements, I have two condolence messages. One from Uganda Revenue Authority, where Papa previously worked. Condolence message to the family of the late Canon Moya Lakabwai. We are truly saddened to learn of the untimely demise of your dear wife, Mrs. Muriela Kabwai, and would like to express our sincerest condolences to you and your entire family. 
the Legal Services and Board Affairs Department of Uganda Revenue Authority sends its thoughts to you and your family during this difficult time. We certainly believe that God will only welcome her into heaven and always say, well done, my good and faithful servant. We encourage you with the word of God from Revelations 21, 1 to 4, which says, He will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Dr. Stephen Akaboy, please accept our heartfelt condolences at this difficult time. And uh, the second and last condolence message that I've received as of now is from Birunji Barata and Associates to the family of Mr. Stephen Akabwai, condolence message. We, the management and staff of Birunji Barata and Associates, wish to convey our deepest sympathies to you on the passing of your dear wife and mom, Mrs. Muriel Akabwai. We know this is an extremely difficult time for you, but we pray that the Almighty God comforts you and strengthens your entire family. Our thoughts and prayers are with you all during this difficult time. Please accept our humble contribution of Uganda shillings, 500,000 shillings only, towards the burial expenses. May her soul rest in eternal peace with a sincere sympathy coming from Birungi and Barata Associates. Allow me also to recognize the presence of uh, Honorable Winnie Kiza, the former leader of position. May you uh, rise up for recognition. Thank you very much. Also in our midst is Honorable Evelyn Osege. Please wave to the mourners. Thank you very much. Uh, in the next few minutes, allow me to make these announcements. Immediately after here, we shall be moving to Kumi, where we shall have a one-hour service in Kumi with the people that Toto has been fellowshipping with. And thereafter, we shall proceed to the village in Kadokaderun, where Toto will lie in state tomorrow. And on Saturday, we shall have Toto finally rest. And the burial program will start at 10. And we look forward to seeing all of you there. Uh, I want to give brief directions to where the village is. There are a couple of options on how to reach our village depending on which direction you'll be coming from. If you're traveling from Kampala, there are a few options. The first one is through Iganga, Tirini Road, you branch off uh, to your left up to Palisa town, where you have the opportunity to branch off from Mukongoro town, up to Kadok trading center, where you will take a left turn, which takes you straight to the village. If you decide otherwise, you can move from Palisa town to Kumi town, and take your left to Mora trading center, which is also now a town council where you branch to your left from Mora Township Primary School and immediately after the town council offices, you will take your left. That road has been clearly graded and it will bring you right up to the compound. For those who will move from Bali, you will still follow the road that will bring you up to Kumi Town where you will turn left from the town and then up to Mora Trading, uh, Mora Town Council, Mora Township Primary School, and all the way to the village. Again, we look forward to seeing all of you, and we are grateful for all the support you've given us 
morally, financially, spiritually, and we are grateful for the support and for the presence that you've given us here today in your various capacities. We can't thank you enough, but once again, Eyala Manoi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, MC. Pleasure. Uh, thank you very much, MC. Uh, just I want to thank all of you that you've uh, managed to contribute 926,000. 500. But uh, after we did this, I saw some people coming in. Please, why don't you be part of us? Uh, I'm going to hand this over to the family. So please, if you know that uh, you are not part of this, you go and see the family and you do the need for. Hallelujah. God will bless you. Hallelujah. Can I hand over this to <laughs> Yes. You came late. This is the lady. Don't follow her. Yeah, I do know the, the, those people. Yeah? Don't follow her. She has security. May God bless you. <laughs> okay. Now can we all rise up on our feet and we sing our recessional no, uh, hymn. Uh, it is in the uh, the order of service, the last. Sorry. 